coming up on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City after show. If The Shining were a vehicle, we would have been on it. It was actually the first time that I believed their friendship was real. You don't want no shot smoke, honey. Cause you ain't doing we're going to Taco Bell to get a double crunchy gordita, bitch. So sit down. How did the feds know that you were at Beauty Lab? This was my aha moment. As I'm talking to Heather, I'm like, wait, yeah, that doesn't make sense. The location to meet for that morning had switched at like 1 a.m. So there was a very, very limited group that knew that instead of meeting at Mary's house, we were going to meet at Beauty Lab. Oh, <laughs> yeah! Hello. I was trying to figure out why he was disrespecting the cake. It was a replica of her boobs because Seth compliments her boobs. You can't make this up. Your Real Housewives of Salt Lake City after show starts now. Tensions on the bus between you and Jenna rise pretty quickly. I mean, if The Shining were a vehicle, we would have been on it. I, I literally, I'm shutting down. I'm shutting the down right now. I can't talk to your friend like this. Talk to your friend like this. Talk to Meredith like this. Talk to Meredith like this. You know, I thought we were having a great time. We were joking when we took off. Like, John jumped down the van and we're like, let John stay on. Like, I would have loved that. But it quickly um, turned into literally like The Shining. What are you going to do? Jump out of my car? Get out of my way. Get out of my way. I just think that they were fighting about more than we're even aware of because I promise you it does not escalate over nothing. It had a lot to do with like Meredith, I think. Heather is t has told me and you know about Meredith saying she has some involvement with calling the feds. How did they know that you were at Beauty Lab? It seems like Mary and Meredith no more than any of us. So when we're on the bus, Jenny has told me that um, she hired a private investigator. Jenny tells me Meredith hired a private investigator. It was mentioned at the veil. You guys all heard it. And on the bus too, they say that she lied about having the memorial. Well, she missed the first trip because of her dad's memorial. Do you think that's true though? Do you guys think that's the truth? Shady. Everyone's saying this and Lisa's just sitting there. So Lisa, that's your friend for 20 fake years or whatever. What is this? Like, that's your friend. And Lisa tries to play this. She's like, I don't talk about you to Meredith. And I don't talk about Meredith to you. I think I'm in a hard situation because I care about both of you. Lisa, you can't do that though. You sign up or you don't sign up. Okay, but bitch, when it's time to vote, vote. Meaning you can be with friends with whoever, but you should have an opinion about what's right and wrong. You want to call all of us and hold my feet to the fire if I breathe on somebody that you has done you wrong 20 years ago in your past life, you know? So now answer for your girl. You haven't had yes. the same accountability. We have her. her. We have her. No, you haven't. You know, I think Jen, you know, her emotions are running rampant. First, she's having words with Jenny. It turns to me over my relationship with Meredith. And at first I was like, she's kidding. And then I'm like, oh no, she's serious. Jen has a real issue right now. And I thought it was gonna turn into something physical. No, no. then say it! No. no, then say it! Tensions were high with me and emotions because this is my life. This isn't like the hospital smell, okay? My ass got double amputated and you said you smell like hospital. This is a real thing that can affect my family and my livelihood. So. This is not okay if she, your friend is going around calling private investigators and calling the feds. And so that's why I looked at Lisa like, that's your girl. You, you defend her, no problem. Then defend her right now. How do you defend this? It was actually the first time that I believed their friendship was real because I saw some actual emotion between the two. It was like Lisa had to answer for the fact that she was still kind of pretending to be Meredith's friend, but Jen was like, you're not Meredith's friend and you better own it right now. Lisa was like, gonna fight for her reputation at all costs. And then the fight just escalated like immediately. Lisa was like, I'm not gonna apologize for this anymore. Jen, I can't go backwards, I can't. Oh, thank you for not going backwards. Okay, 
use that same energy with Angie and the charcuterie board. I am like just seriously so upset right now. Let's just, just I am Lisa. Upset. I am completely upset by this. This is like real life shit, and now Lisa wants to be hypocritical and like turn a blind eye and be like, I'm, I'm disengaging and it's not my problem. That's what p pissed me off because I'm like, no, this isn't the last time you're talking about it. If you're gonna defend those actions, then who are you? And then Lisa tried to get all like, what are you gonna do? Come on, come, come on! Come you don't want that smoke. You don't want the smoke from me over here. You don't want no Shaw smoke, honey. Sit down. Cause you ain't doing but going to Taco Bell to get a double crunchy gordita, bitch. So sit down. You ain't doing anything. At Seth's birthday, Whitney surprises everyone with a special cake. Oh, oh, I, I, think, I think this might be a gift for you, honey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Well, first of all, I was trying to figure out why he was disrespecting the cake. I didn't know that Whitney brought the cake for Seth for those little gig, gag gifts, but it was a replica of her boobs because Seth compliments her boobs. I know that you have a certain appreciation for my cleavage. <laughs> so for art. I thought I'd give for you- For art. I thought I'd give you a mouthful. <laughs> That's heavy weight. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. And wow. I mean, obviously I am not ashamed to show my boobs, okay? I, I love my boobs. I think I love my boobs so much because they offend people so much. Like, I think I love it just to piss people off more than I do just the beauty of boobs. But Seth's fascination with my boobs. Mine too, by the way. Your personality is, it's so distracting. I never noticed your breasts. This is a slam dunk. Her boobs are LeBron James and mine are Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, listen, Heather and I have very good Breast, but the first time you said it, it was funny. It was hilarious. You set the bar for cleavage, and I want her to get the same exact cleavage. Second time you said it, I was like, oh, he's gonna make this a thing. Justin, please give me Whitney's plastic Here surgeon. I mean, that is art in its purest form. Third, fourth, fifth, I'm like, come on, Seth. This has gone too far. I've been talking to Meredith about getting the Whitney augmentation. Oh. So. I thought it would be cheeky to make a cake with breasts and tell him, you know, maybe if he got a mouthful, he'd stop talking about it. Seth is very sarcastic and I don't know if people get it or not. He would not have gone there with anybody. Whitney has a good sense of humor and, you know, she herself talks about redoing her boobs and this, that, and the other. These are natural. <laughs> <laughs> They're bigger. Uh -huh. than they were in the bikini in the bathtub scene. They're, they're higher. <laughs> knowing her and knowing that she's lighthearted about it and whatever, it was meant to be funny. And he just wanted to make people laugh and have a good time with it. A clap back with that cake. I thought that was great from her because he was going far with it. You know, it was a lot. I mean, and good. I think it was great that she did that. I think it was hysterical. I was mad at Meredith for not being mad. Yeah, she should have been angry, live it. Like there's, a, that's not even a boundary. That's just like a total disrespect. And then the cake, they have like big nipples and big boobs and, and it's Whitney's for Seth. How is that okay? How do you even process that in your head? Okay, what is the next question? <laughs> So you ladies all meet up to go to Zion and you find out not only are you going to be in the same bus. Oh my gosh. But it's the same driver. <laughs> Deja vu. How you doing? Kevin! How are you? Seeing we're gonna have as an exciting ride as last time. <laughs> oh my gosh. No! So like you have deja vu. <laughs> yes! Oh my god, yes. When I sat down in my same seat, I was like, this is really weird. No! <laughs> I mean, how coincident do you get the same drive with the same car and then the same group of women in this vehicle, except for Jen? Yes! I made it on the bus! 
which was so bizarre to me. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, with my culture, we believe in superstition and all that stuff. I was like, I don't even know how to explain that feeling. Like, I think it was meant for a reason. I was literally thinking my friends have a plane and they were on their way to St. George and it would have been a really quick trip to Zion's and they're like the night before, fly down with us and just book a car. So I like literally could have flown private. John actually said, you know, you can't leave Jenny. You got to go on the bus with Jenny. Like she's your friend. You brought her into this. You can't fly private. You've got to get on the van. And I was like dreading it. I'm like, I'll show up. I'm a team player. Let's go. Well, I thought I was going to have to sleep with the driver because that driver, that driver liked me from day one. Hi, how I think are you're you? here for me. I'm Heather. Hi, Heather. Kevin, how are you Hi, doing? Hi, Kevin. Nice, nice to, to meet, you. meet you. So I thought, okay, now I'm going to have to sleep with the drivers. This is what's happening. You guys are setting me up. I was just like, this is a bad joke. Like, Heather has to sleep with the driver. The, uh, the feds aren't going to show up. It felt like a lot of PTSD, like trapped in the van with Lisa, but now Jen and no Meredith, no Mary, and the same driver. So I'm like, I hope you pack condoms with because yeah, this is gonna be a long trip. This is gonna be a lot. He's a happily married man and I had very a lot of conversation with him and he asked me to go back to the Mormon church. So he pulled me aside behind the bus and said, the church is true, you're making a mistake. I watched you know, the show, you need to go back. Heather, I didn't Truth. know that. And I said, would a blow job change your mind? <laughs> And he, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. I didn't. I thought, I thought it, but I didn't say it. Good. I'm, gl I'm glad you filtered it. I'm glad you filtered that one. I'm a servant of Satan, but not to that point, you know? While at the spa with Jen, the conversation turns to the mysterious circumstances around her arrest. Yeah, I mean, I wanted Jen's perspective on the whole situation. How did the feds know you're at Beauty Lab? How did they know that you were at Beauty Lab? I was like, Jen, well, how did they know you were at Beauty Lab? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I never thought about it. This was my aha moment. I think it's very coincidental. Meredith doesn't come to Beauty Lab. She tells us the night before at late. I don't know how in the hell anybody knew that we were even at Beauty Lab. I did think it was weird the day it when we got the thing that Meredith wasn't coming. Here's the thing, I went to Aspen for a memorial for my father. So I am gonna meet you by some bail. Because it's your, you're hosting this event. And she, and she was like, oh, I'm, I'm already here because my dad had a funeral or a viewing or a memorial. I think she said it was a memorial. And it's like, okay, don't you have to plan those things? Because I know I went through my dad's, you know, passing and planned his funeral and memorial and everything. And like, that's not something you wake up one day and go, oh yeah, by the way, we're going to have this tomorrow in this other state. No, like you plan it. So wouldn't you have just said when you invited everyone to go to this event, hey, I'm going to be in Vail. So I'll meet you all there. Not like, oh, hey, guess what? Uh, in five hours, I'm not going to show up because I'm already in Vail. Like, it, so... As I'm talking to Heather, I'm like, wait, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Mary, the day of 30 minutes before, says she's not coming. It seems like Mary and Meredith know more than any of us. Meredith and Mary were not there, and all signs are pointing to them knowing something. Do you think they knew something? It was a last minute decision for us all to meet there as a group to leave for the trip. The location to meet for that morning had switched at like 1 a.m. So there was a very, very limited group that knew that we were gonna, instead of meeting at Mary's house, we were gonna meet at Beauty Lab. Mary called me like 20 minutes before we left and said, I'm not coming on the party bus. I had to get my own transportation because I had the worst headache. Last night I couldn't even sleep. I'll meet you in Vail later. I've arranged private transportation. The Mary thing, the day it happened, I was like, okay, it's just Mary because she doesn't want to come on the bus without Meredith. But then the fact that they did it together, and then I keep hearing them, the things that were said at Vail. She's red flagged in the system of Louis Vuitton because she pays in cash. I never seen potential in Jen. I never seen good in Jen. My son was being threatened. I hired a private investigator. He thought it was extraordinarily was likely that, that it was, was coming dad. from Jen. Like, who's gonna do some shady like that? Like, that's some real shady stuff, right? Now it's making me think more like, 
okay, this, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. And how did they know I was at Beauty Lab? At Seth's party, you have a conversation with Meredith about Jen, their friendship, and why they still aren't in a good place. Did you ever consider inviting Jen tonight? No. Is there more to the story that we need to know so we know what we're dealing, like, dealing with or, you know? My biggest question is, and it still is, like, if, if you hire a private investigator... My son was being threatened. I hired a private investigator. Could they stumble across a federal investigation? Because an investigation by nature is secretive, right? You don't want anyone to know that it's going on. So my biggest question is, could that PI have uncovered that there was an investigation on Jen? That's a genius question. Basically, after her apology to Brooks, we were in a very neutral zone in my view. We had been at like negative 100 going into ice fishing and we kind of got to like a zero where I'm like, okay, we're not friends, we're not not friends. I felt like Jen was in a position where she believed that we sh were going to move forward from a zero to being friends. And I'm not criticizing her. I understand why she believed that. For me, though, in order to actually move off of that zero, I had to be able to have some level of trust. And I didn't. I knew I was not going to move off that zero quickly. And I know Jen's you know, nature is to be one where it's sort of like all in. And I felt like I was going to run into a big problem if I didn't just say to her, look, I'm not ready to go there. And we need to just not be friends right now, be neutral, be able to coexist. And if we can do that and you can be kind to me and my family, maybe down the road, something will come of it, but it's going to take time. So that was what my plan was in Vail, was to kind of get through all of that, but that didn't happen. We're looking for Jen Shaw. Uh, is it possible that she could have known that something was coming for Jen? Because she keeps reminding me that this investigation had been going on for over nine years. This has been going on for many years. This isn't they like it happened her today. In and that's probably public record in all of the legal documents, but um, that's a great, Great question to ask. This year, we've seen you and Coach go through a lot from talks of divorce. Six months ago, Sharif and I almost got a divorce. Really? To working on your relationship and couples therapy. What we got going on? Look, this is our homework for, for couples therapy. Can you talk about what this journey has been like? Absolutely. Um, you know, when I was dealing with the loss of my father, I kept a lot of stuff, a lot of my feelings inside because the way I was raised and brought up and in my culture, it was like, just get your mind right and move forward. And I'm the oldest in a Tongan and Hawaiian family. And as the oldest, I have responsibilities to set the example. Going through the stages of grief, I had a lot of guilt. Like I could have spent more time with my dad. I should have done more. I should have, you know, and so I suppressed a lot of that thinking I could just, I'd be okay. And I was looking for somebody to blame. It affected a lot of different aspects of my life, not just the grief with losing my father, but my marriage. I needed you here a long time ago when dad passed away. I needed you, I needed you there. I was holding a lot of resentment because he wasn't at the funeral. Now I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but at the time I did not know, listen, I was super messed up. I did not know what I was talking about. I didn't even know the feelings I was feeling, but it affected my marriage. And, you know, even before the loss of my dad, there was some resentment before that with, with Coach Shaw because he was gone all the time. And listen, I'm the one that told him to go take this job a after being an attorney for 15 years and, a, and an NFL agent. I told him you should be a coach because he's so motivational. I just felt like that's his calling on earth to help change lives. So when I lost my dad, that's when everything kind of came to the surface of everything I had been holding back. He could feel, you know, that he's like, why do you have so much resentment towards me? Why do you have so much anger towards me? And I was literally like, what are you talking about? 
I don't, but obviously I did and he could feel it. That was just the tipping point and him not being there at my dad's funeral just it really hurt me, even though I told him, no, that's fine, babe, go to work, I totally get it. So coach is like, what do you want me to do? You told me, I'm doing what you told me to do, but I'm like, yeah, but you're supposed to know it's opposite day in my brain. So if I tell you that, that means no, you're supposed to do the opposite, you know? And so inside there was, there was pain that I wasn't allowing to, to come out because I felt like that would be me being weak and not being a good wife and not being there to support my husband. and you know, when in actuality, me doing that actually was hurting my husband in our marriage. So coach and I, you know, we talked through it, worked through it. You just don't get better overnight though. It's a process. And I think for coach, he's so used to fixing everything and being a positive influence in my life. And so when he didn't see me like getting better, it affected him where he was like, it wasn't that he didn't love me anymore or didn't necessarily want to be in the marriage. He was like, if I'm not doing anything positive for you, if I can't be that positive change, then maybe there's somebody else that can do that because I just want you to be happy and get through it. And so it also was, there was a lot of like awakenings for coach through the process that we were going through where he was like, okay, I can't fix everything, right? I can't give a pep talk and Jen's gonna do a high kick and be like, yes, let's go. He just wanted the best for me, but the best is, was not him or us leaving it the best was us continuing to work through it he will even admit to people that he talks to now like listen this was as much a growing and learning experience for me than it was for jen you know at seth's birthday party the husbands announced that they have a surprise for you ladies for mother's day um <laughs> We're giving you guys a gift for Mother's Day. So this is a treat for all of you to go down to Zion. John has booked us a villa for you, and you're going to have the best time of your life. <laughs> Mother's Day in Zion with a group of women who are all fighting with one another, and one that I've told for the last three months I'm not your friend. She needs support and friends, and I can't be that right now. Yeah, no. I wasn't excited because I know the conflict and the drama that has been involved with these ladies. And it's totally normal for you to come in after you've been talking her all night, go downstairs, come to my room, smiling with the big Louis Vuitton. Oh my God, they're not going to resolve it. Yay, let's all be mad at Lisa. We're not doing that anymore. Like, okay, here we go again. (laughs) But on the flip side, I'm like, great. I get to be away from my husband for a little bit because I need some lady time. I love it. I think John appreciates guy time. He likes me to have fun too with my girlfriends too. I think that's important for John. Like he knows I like my time with my friends too. Are you gonna defend Mary? Are you gonna defend what Mary just did? I hope not. I hope not. But Mary Mary was not sitting there when she got up. That is not okay. That I do know. Happy Mother's Day to you, Seth. Enjoy your golf game. (laughs) What do you think of the husband's bromance? I love it. I think that it's one of the cutest things ever. And I'm so grateful that they actually get along because clearly the women struggle getting along all the time. But I think it's amazing that I can show up to events and just go chill with my girlfriend. Winnie, why are you in here? That's it. I know that Justin's having a great time too. I mean, I think it's nice that they're all, you know, getting to know each other better. You know, they did not know each other well. This year, I felt like there was definitely a lot more interaction with the husband, certainly with mine. We we weren't separated. That that made it a little easier to actually have my husband around. But uh, so I think it's nice. They have a nice dynamic together. It's much lighter than it is between us ladies. They don't let the deep subjects that we're disagreeing and arguing over really seem to impact them very much. You said, I said, Jen's going to jail and you're next. I never said that, Mary Cosby. I didn't lie. Don't call me a liar. I don't like that. You lied about that that because I did not say that. That is a lie. You said a lie. And I keep it light and fun. You play golf with your wife. I do. I honor that they can still have their bromance even when the wives are like, duking it out. It says a lot about them. 